Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, August 7th. I'm Patricia Valone. Thank you for joining us. Well, last week's arson in Upper Marlboro has caused a series of problems in addition to the fire that severely damaged a commercial building. As we mentioned yesterday, the loss of two popular eateries in an area already short of restaurants has left people frustrated. Today, we take a look at problems for pedestrians getting around downtown Upper Marlboro and how the recent fire has made it much worse. Sometimes we just have to, you know. Whenever there's not any cars passing by, we just have to run across. When a three-alarm fire tears through the heart of the county seat, much of daily life is disrupted, including this major thoroughfare, which was briefly shut down. Five days later, it's still somewhat chaotic, particularly if you travel by foot. It took us a while to find parking because of the fence. They took away of some parking spaces, and then it was confusing on you. Like You don't know where you should cross because the fence is out and it's in the way. Crossing the intersection here at Water and Main Streets in Upper Marble can be quite challenging, mainly because there is no pedestrian countdown timer on the street. But in addition, this new fence that was put up because of the arson that recently took place is causing many people to actually walk around it. It was four years ago when a pedestrian was tragically killed at that same intersection, yet it's still difficult to cross the street today. State transportation officials are asking people to stay on the sidewalks when they can and not to cross roadways in the middle of the street. You know, with that fire that happened right now, it did disrupt some of the pedestrian pathways. Uh, you know, we're working with the fire department to see what we can do to actually improve that. But, you know, those buildings have been burned, so we, you know, we, we had to err on the side of caution. What we recommend people to do is to cross on the other side of the road and, and, and go to the safe crossings. But we found dozens of people walking around the fence and into the roadway or simply not using the crosswalks on Main Street. But no, you just you... crossed, there wasn't a crosswalk, did you? Correct, correct, correct. So just... <laughs> just cross the street. Yeah, I've been given a whole lot of thought about it. No. no. Well, we're going to be upgrading that intersection and adding pedestrian signals, which would include the what we call audible pedestrian signals or accessible pedestrian signals and the countdown pedestrian signals, which actually display how much time you have to safely, you know, cross that roadway. And the Maryland Department of Transportation plans to meet with town officials in September to discuss pedestrian safety issues in Upper Marlboro. In other news tonight, a Landover man learns his fate after pleading guilty to federal charges related to a firebombing. Richard Butler was sentenced yesterday to more than 20 years in prison for attempting to blow up his girlfriend's apartment. The incident took place here at the Overland Garden Apartments in Landover in March 2016. Five people were in the apartment during the attempted firebombing. Now, county police are investigating a deadly shooting. Our Denise Douglas is on the desk with more. Well, thank you, Patty. A teenager was gunned down last night in Hydesville, and police are searching for his killer. Around 7 p.m., officers responded to the 6700 block of New Hampshire Avenue. There, police found 16-year-old Kevin Wilson suffering from gunshot wounds. He was taken to the hospital where he died a short time later. Anyone with information about the incident is asked to call police at 301-772-4925. Meanwhile, two Howard County fair workers are dead after a suspected overdose. It happened around noon today when police were called by an employee who noticed two people inside a locked bunkhouse on the fairgrounds. The fire department forced entry and found two men dead, one in his 30s, the other in his 40s. Officials say there was evidence of drug use. Police are working to notify next of kin. The health of the Chesapeake Bay is good, but there's still a lot of work to be done. That was the message from Governor Larry Hogan and the other members of the Chesapeake Executive Council. Representatives from six watershed states, the district, and the EPA took part in today's annual meeting in Baltimore. Recently, Maryland accused Pennsylvania and New York of not doing their fair share to keep the bay clean after debris and trash made its way through the Conowingo Dam and floodgates and into the Chesapeake Bay. We've been fighting bay. to protect and restore full federal funding for the Chesapeake Bay, which is a fight that we will continue to pursue together. Uh, with our own state budget, Maryland has been leading by example. We have fully funded all bay restoration efforts three years in a row, including fully funding the Chesapeake Bay and Atlantic Coastal Bay's trust fund for the first time in state history, and we fully funded program open space for the first time in more than a decade. 
In total, our administration has committed an historic $4 billion toward wide-ranging initiatives, and we've made tremendous progress. The Chesapeake Executive Council was established 35 years ago.